All right, I just have to give a quick heads up. The following story is not quite safe for work. Um, yeah, I just wanted to give that one in case you're at work or with your parents or something like that. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to Ventity215. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. They're the ones who drew the adorable fan art that you saw at the intro. I'll leave a link to their channel in the description below. If you have any fan art or fan creations that you would like me to show on my channel, hit me up. I'll leave multiple links in the description below in terms of how you can find me or how to get in contact with me. I can't wait to see how you guys get creative and more importantly, how you guys dive into imagination. Oh, 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 and before I forget, I don't know why I keep forgetting to mention this. I've actually forgot for about a week or so now. Um, a lot of people have been sending me messages and telling me that they haven't been getting notifications about my uploads happening. Be sure to hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel. This way it will actually let you know when my videos drop. I, I'm sorry that YouTube is doing this kind of nonsense. I, I don't even know why I'm apologizing for them. This shouldn't be a thing. But yeah, just be sure to hit that bell icon on the subscription button. Thanks. And without further ado, let's begin. When you think of superpowers, you tend to think of super speed, super sight, super intelligence, or anything that's extraordinary, something that people would be proud of. But what if I told you I had a superpower? And what if I told you that I'm not too proud of the superpower that I have? Most importantly, what if I told you that this superpower embarrasses the hell out of me when it actually is executed? Now, just to get this out of the way, this isn't something that you'd see in a comic book or like you'd see somebody saving the day with. As a matter of fact, it's one that I kind of wish I never really had, but everyone else that I know, especially Mono, especially Mono with this one, enjoys when this actually happens. Now, with this kind of power, I can't really explain into words what it is, but just to be able to help you understand what it is exactly and how I can paint a clearer picture for you, I'll tell you three situations that I've been in where it actually executed to its fullest and uh, the things that happened after and I'll let you decide to label it as you want. The earliest I remember this happening was about three years before I met Mono, so I was about ninth grade around then. I'm hanging at the bus stop with my friends Michelle and Gabrielle, for sure. They, those are not their real names, but that's just what I'm going to call them for now. And Michelle was a close friend of mine, but Gabrielle had a thing for me, and I was just not aware of this for, like, ever. No one really knew. So we're waiting at the bus stop, and we're getting ready to go home, and Gabrielle starts confessing to me. She's just like, hey, Epsi, you know, I've always had a big thing for you, this and that, this and that. And all of a sudden, I'm just like, so when's the bus coming? Now Michelle blows up at me, right? And she's just like, Epsi, did you just now realize that Gabrielle just confessed to you? And so now I stop and I have a blank expression on my face. I, that's what that's what Michelle tells me. And my only response was, wasn't the bus supposed to be here already though? So now <laughs> Gabrielle is just like really hurt. And Michelle's pissed at me for the rest of the day. And I just couldn't figure out why those two were so pissed. I don't know what it was. I think after like two months, I finally realized that she had a thing for me. And I was wondering why she wasn't talking to me anymore. But by then she had been long gone. She already moved and I had never seen her since. Now, the next time that this power executes for lack of better wording, it happened about a year after. Now I'm in math class and there's this girl at, I like, I have to admit, she was the reason why I was into the booty. I, I, I just, oh my God, she was freaking gorgeous. I'm gonna call her Cammy for now. Just once again, it's not her real name. But anyway, since the beginning of the year, me and Cammy had the same math class. And like I said, I always had a thing for her, but I always did my best not to let anybody know. Cause I, one, I don't wanna be bothered by it. And two, I don't want anybody making anything awkward out of, out of nothing really. So this was also around the time that I started learning while well, teaching myself how to draw. Cause before that I was really bad. So I was just about doodling whenever I could. So now Cammy actually tends to come by my desk from time to time and compliment me on my drawings, even if I really don't have anything up yet, you know? But one of the things that she was always willing to do was help me learn the female anatomy and stuff like that in certain ways. And I was just like, wow, that's really awesome. Like someone's willing to help me learn the female body because you know, like, like I said, I'm just starting. I don't really know much yet. So it, whatever help I can get, the better. Now, before this gets blown out of proportion, no, she wasn't getting naked or doing anything weird or whatever. You know, this was all in class. Like she would just kind of show me, hey, that's kind of not how they're usually shaped or et cetera. And I, I would kind of take that advice. But sometimes the information that she gave me was a little sensitive. So I was just like, whatever. 
So now, as time passes and I'm learning how to draw, personally, I thought she was just getting cooler and cooler with me because she was helping me learn how to draw, but I wasn't aware that there were other intentions behind all this. Like, since I like to doodle and I was in the doodling phase, like basically I would doodle whenever I could, I always tried my best to not let the teachers see me doing it because, you know, I'd get in trouble, of course, because I'm not paying attention to class. But Cammy sat in the front and she always sat in the front. But once we started talking, she started sitting in the back with me, pulling our desks together, etc. If there were any like uh, assignments where we could get a partner, she automatically jumped to be my partner. And if anybody else was my partner, she'd be really pissed off about it. So everybody kind of knew, hey, don't be Epsi's partner. That's Cammy's. And after a while, she didn't really like that I was sitting in the back so much. So she would always do her best to get me to sit in the front. And it always slipped my mind that she wanted me to sit in the front. So I'd go into the back and she'd get pissed, right? And people actually stopped sitting in the front near her because they knew that sooner or later I was going to come in and I would have to sit next to her. So whatever. Now, people are constantly making these jokes after a while. So, you know, how's the relationship with you and Cammy going? How's this and that? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? But once again, I'm not noticing. She's always sitting down and you know having lunch with me she actually changed her lunch period to be with mine etc i'm like okay whatever so now <laughs> finally a big day comes up right and i didn't know this was a big day to be honest but i go home and she's going home and she wanted my number and i was like okay so i gave her my number now i get home and around i think what, six o'clock seven o'clock it was it was somewhere in the afternoon she gives me a call and I'm like, oh, hey, what's up? And so we're talking, we're talking, we're talking for like an hour and a half, all about drawing, this and that, all this other, all these random things. And then out of nowhere, she goes up and she's just like, hey, Epsi, I'm horny. And I'm like, well, I got a science project I got to do. You know, I, I got I got to go and mow the lawn and I got these dishes to do. My mom's getting mad about me about the dishes, this, that, like... And so she hangs up right away, right away, right? And I'm like, what the hell was that all about? So now <laughs> I go into class the next day and she won't talk to me at all. And she's pissed. And I'm like, okay, I, I didn't understand what was going on. Now, keep in mind when she said that, despite the fact that she blatantly said that on the phone and I'm not paraphrasing, I'm not, I'm literally quoting her. I, it just didn't click in. And so now everybody's talking to me and they're like, yo, what'd you do? This is that, this is that. Did you forget this is that for her? And I'm like, no, I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know why she's mad at me. So I'm, I go back and sit in the back and I'm looking at her. I'm like, why is she so mad? And now I'm kind of like in a fuck position, right? Because for the rest of the year, like everyone kind of understood that me and her were going to be like partners on anything that was going on or whatever. So we were still kind of partners and she was just always like really nasty to me about everything. So I was like, oh, okay, whatever. But I'm just gonna say this now because I have to whenever I think about it, ripping pieces that booty, oh my God. Oh guys, if you saw what I saw. <laughs> but, but anyway, for the last story, and I kind of need to give you a little setting here. So this way you kind of understand where this is going. About two years before the whole thing with Kay and Yukio happened, I used to have a job as nightclub security and sometimes as a bouncer in certain places. They sound very similar, but they're actually pretty different, but that's a long, that's a long story. But while I was there, I remember being at the club one day and there was this girl who had like a thing for me. Once again, her name was, I'm just going to call her Sonia. She was really, really cool with me, this and that. And for some odd reason, she donned me the name Sonic the Hedgehog. I, Personally, I don't know why the fuck that was given to me as a nickname, but she just thought it was cute and it fit me and she just really, really liked me. So it's, it's whatever. But as you can tell by now, did I catch on that she liked me? No, <laughs> not at all. I'm just there doing my job. But regardless of what location I went to, she always found out from my buddies where I was going to be and always managed to be there on every single occasion. Now, fast forward a couple of years. This is about a year after the whole situation with Kay and Yu-Gi-Oh happened. And me and Mano are driving down to a supermarket. Broad daylight, bro. It's in the daytime. She's driving. I'm in the passenger seat. And we stop at a red light. And I see Sonia on the sidewalk getting ready to cross the street. So I lower the window and I'm like, oh, hey, Sonia. And she runs up to me. She's like, oh, hey, Epsi. And she just goes, Mwah! she just lays a real wet one right on my cheek. And now, I <laughs> Mano's staring at me. 
Sonya's staring at me. And I don't know where to look, so I just kind of like melt into my seat. I'm just, I just slouch way the hell out. And so now they both bust out laughing. And I'm like, what the hell are you guys laughing for? Because <laughs> it was just the most awkward situation. But I just didn't know what came over her to do that. So she's like, it's good to see you. And she just runs off. And I'm like, wow, I felt like shit the, <laughs> the rest of the day. <laughs> After the whole market trip and whatnot. And so I was like, who is that? Was that your ex or something? And I'm like, no, she's not. I knew her from when I was working at one point and whatnot. She's like, wow, well, she, you know, she's real buddy buddy with you. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> But it was at that point that Mono lets me know that she, apparently she had a thing for me after I told her the situation with her. So, yeah. All in all, this superpower is something that, like I said, I'm not proud of. But when things like this happen, and Mono does this on purpose. Like, she'll always look for girls that I used to either have a crush on or girls that she knew that had a crush on me. And she would always try to find a way to get them to kind of like do something to me so that way i can have that weird reaction again but if you're asking no i'm not socially awkward or anything of the sort as a matter of fact i'm very used to being around people and dealing with the public and whatnot i ever since i was a child my mom used to put me in pageants and stuff and uh that's all that's a whole other situation but yeah like i've always been used to being in front of people or dealing with people but for some odd reason when girls have a thing for me my mind just, shoo, it just goes way out the window. I don't know what the hell's happening. <laughs> but yeah, I uh, hope you enjoyed this story. I hope you enjoyed the three situations that I've been in. And, um, you know, poke fun of me in the comments below if you like, whatever. But for today's like goal, we'll go for 10 likes. One like equals one big smooch. <laughs> but for my next story, I will be talking about my greatest fear. Um... It's an awkward one, so I think you'll be happy to hear that when that comes around. And Mono still pokes fun at me for this all the time, despite the fact that I told her, and I kind of wish I never told her about it. But if you haven't subscribed, why not subscribe? I'll be hitting you with more gaming news, funny stories, or things that are obvious that most people aren't bringing to light. And be sure to share this story if you think it's going to give somebody else a good laugh. But most importantly, be safe, have fun, dive into imagination. Catch you guys later. Oh my god! Ripping pieces of that booty! Cammy! Cammy!